All right, 5-1, day two. Still working our way towards understanding the trigonometry a little bit better, but uh, the unit circle is incredibly important to it, and so we're going to keep looking at ways of, of using it. So example one says basically determine the quadrant where the terminal side of each angle lies. What do you mean terminal? Yeah, ending, because terminate would be the root there. Uh, and so where does it end? And basically, if you look at the unit circle, here is your y-axis. Here is your x-axis. So this right here is quadrant 1. That's quadrant 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so either you can uh, draw yourself a circle in there so that you can see it, or you can get your unit circle out and kind of look at it. And so if we're looking at 45 degrees, now remember, you're always supposed to start from that spot right here. So if I talk about 45 degrees, we're talking about that one right there. So the terminal side would be considered this one here. That's where it's ending. And so which quadrant is that in? One. Okay. Now, 5 pi over 4. Here's how I would look at that. Do you agree you could kind of look at that as 1 and 1 fourth pi, right? 5 fourths? Well, 1 pi is that far, correct? 1 fourth would get me, would it get me all the way to the fourth quadrant or not if I only went a quarter of pi? No, basically it would get you to right there, right? That's where it would end. And so we are in quadrant 3. You can just write the number 3 if you want. You don't have to go Roman numerals. Well, what about 402? Well, that's more than 360 degrees. Is that possible? Yeah, you just keep going around the circle. So obviously, if you went around once, you went 360 degrees. So what you could do is figure out, well, if I take away those 360 degrees, well, how much are we talking about? Okay, 42, I've been told. Is it 42? Yep. Yeah. So 42 degrees, where's that going to end up? Quadrant 1. Now, 13 pi over 7, you may notice that I started you off with A and B, which were two of them that were on the unit circle, and then we went to C and D, ones that are not. But is it still possible to find where they end, even if they're not right on there? Yeah. So 13 pi over 7, once again, I would look at that as basically 1 and 6 sevenths pi. Do you agree with that? Not quite 2, in other words. So if it's not quite 2 pi, that means I don't quite make it all the way around. Agreed? So it's going to be in the form. Because, again, 2 pi is all the way around. Okay. And again, technically, it, it's basically looking at an angle like that, and it's saying, well, how big is that? Well, we ended up in the fourth quadrant for right here. Yes, yeah, Sally? Ah, very good question. What do you say if it says 0 degrees? What quadrant is that in? None. It's not in a quadrant. Very good. Or even if I said pi over 2. You say not in a quadrant. Okay. If it's on one of the axes, you say that it's not in a quadrant. Yep. Because it really isn't. Determine if each pair of angles is coterminal. Now, here's where the negative is going to pop up for the first time officially. Negative means you go around the circle the other way. How have we been going around the circle? Which way? How would you describe it? Counterclockwise, so negative means to go around it clockwise. So let's just find out where they are. Well, 150. Well, obviously 90 is that far, right? So how much further do I have to go? Well, quite a bit, right? And so is it that spot right there? Is that 150? Well, that one there? That one there? So about there, right? So we would say that that angle right there is basically 150 degrees, right? And so we got to figure out, is negative 210 exactly the same thing? So we'll do that in green. Well, this much is negative 180. So it's saying if I go a neg another 30 degrees, it would be negative 210, agreed? So I could put that maybe down here as negative 210 degrees. And it's asking if they are co-terminal. Again, terminal means end at the same place. Co means you know, same, is or it's shared, depending on how you look at it. And do they end at the same place? Yes, they do. Okay. Now, 
the other one is saying, well, we got pi over 3. Pi over 3, is that that one? Nope, that's pi over 6. Is it that one? That's pi over 4. That one? Okay, so we're talking about basically that angle there is pi over 3. Well, how about 7 pi over 3? That's just a little over, what, that's 2 and... 2 and how much? And 1 third pi? Do you believe that's going to end in the same place? Why? Because 2 pi is all the way around. Well, that was pretty good. All the way around. And then you go another third. Do you end up at that same spot? Yes. Yes, you do. Now, does that mean every time I give you two angles, they're going to end in the same spot? No. And I can give it to you in radians, or I can give it to you in degrees. And I would like you to kind of try and deal with the radians and see how it works on the unit circle. But can I really stop you from converting it to degrees, seeing I taught you how to do that? Not really. Or maybe you really like radians. There's no way I can stop you from converting degrees to radians. Okay, you know how. And you could check it that way if you wanted to. Yeah, why don't you try C and D right now on your own?